Bon dia. Bon dia a tothom. Benvinguts, benvingudes a la Universitat de Barcelona, aquest edifici magnífic, aquesta sala fantàstica, el Paranimf de la nostra universitat. Good morning, everybody, authorities, professors, students, graduates. It's a great pleasure to welcome all of you to the University of Barcelona. Just a few words to welcome all of you to this magnificent building and this assembly hall. Our university is very ancient. It was founded in 1450. And this academic course, we are delighted to celebrate the sesquicentenary of this iconic historic building, 150 years. Uh, it was designed by the architect Elia Rougen, and it stands as a major symbol of the Catalan capital. Our university uh, is currently made up uh, of a community of over uh, 70,000 people, including uh, students, faculty, and administrative and service staff. And uh, its structure comprises uh, 17 faculties organized uh, among six campuses, the Barcelona Science Park, and also nine affiliated centers. This hall, the Paranymph, is the most emblematic space of the historic building. It was conceived as the heart of the university life. In fact, it is located in the central body of the architectural, uh, architectural uh, structure of the building. It stands uh, for the highest level of university knowledge, which is, uh, for example, the wording of the degree, what uh, we are doing just now. And it is here where the most uh, solemn events take place, such as course openings, the investitures of honorary doctors, or the sessions of the University Senate, as well as other cultural events open uh, to all citizens. So uh, uh, now, um, let us start with the academic graduation ceremony of the Masters Inter in International Relations, International Security, International Development and Erasmus Mundum in Public Policies. But first of all, let me present to you the people who are at the table. Dr. Pablo Pareja, he is Vice Rector for Teaching and Research Staff of the UPF, La Universitat Pompeu Fabra. Uh, Dr. Jacin Jordana, he is the Director of the IBEI, the Barcelona Institute for International Student Studies, and Dr. Arancha González, who is the Dean of Paris School of International Affairs at the prestigious Institute of Political Studies of Paris. So uh, and now, uh, Dr. Pablo Pareja will address you a few words. Pablo, please. Thank you very much, Vice Rector Amat. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, students, graduates. Um, it is an absolute pleasure for me uh, to be part of this graduation ceremony as the Vice Rector of the University of Pompeu Fabra. But if I may, it's even a greater pleasure to do it as a professor of some of the courses in the uh, master's programs at eBay. And it's even a greatest honor doing it in an institution, and I'm very happy to confess this, that gave me my first opportunity when I came back to Barcelona from my years abroad. Um, I joined eBay when it was funded nearly 20 years ago, and um, those were not the easiest times, so having an institution that welcomes you and embraces you, it's, it's something that you can um, easily understand is, is worth sharing and, and sharing. Um, eBay has changed a lot over the last 20 years. Um, 20 years ago, Barcelona had a quite notable community of IR scholars, but we didn't have a center that was a reference center, not only in Barcelona, but also in Spain and, and Europe. And I think that we can all be very proud to see that nearly 20 years later, eBay has consolidated itself as, um, and forgive me for being so um, ambitious, but for being the best um, institute in international relations in Spain, and probably one of the best three in, in Europe. Um, 
graduation ceremonies are very singular events. They are singular events because they give us the opportunity to celebrate students and to thank them for choosing us and for sharing with us a year or two and helping us improve our institutions. So I'd like to start by thanking all the graduates for choosing us and for making eBay a better institution today than it was a year ago. And I have to confess as well that graduation ceremonies are singular because they force us to think that we probably don't celebrate you enough. We do celebrate you today. We do celebrate you at the end of the academic year, but professors and institutions should probably take better care of you and we should probably celebrate you uh, much more. I think eBay is extremely lucky if what some say um, is true, if institutions are as good as the student who has the poorest record. If eBay is so lucky as to be as good as the student who has the worst record here today, I think the institution can also celebrate itself. So I promise that I would not talk for too long. Um, let me congratulate you. I think this is uh, your day today. Um, you probably have one million doubts for the coming weeks, months, and maybe years. But be reassured that we've all gone through that, and that's part of the process. Things will eventually uh, become very clear to all of you. But as of today, make sure that you celebrate us. You've definitely um, earned and you deserve. So congratulations and all the best for the coming years. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Pareja. And now, uh, Jacin Jordana, who is the director of the eBay, will address you also a few words. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Amat, uh, Professor Pareja. Uh, dear professors and researchers of eBay, dear eBay students, parents, friends, and relatives, in the name of uh, uh, eBay, I am using the Catalan acronym, as we call it uh, most of the time. I warmly welcome you to this graduation ceremony for the class of uh, 2023. Firstly, I would like to express my gratitude to our vice rectors for their kind words about UA. I would also like to extend my warm thanks uh, to the University of Barcelona for granting us the opportunity to celebrate this graduation ceremony in this magnificent building. Before introducing uh, Dean Arancha Gonzalez, who is going to give the uh, graduation lecture, I would like to add a few words regarding your intellectual progress uh, during this course at eBay. First, let me say that I hope that you have enjoyed this year as master's students in Barcelona. This has been an amazing opportunity for you to gain a different view of the world and international affairs, not only by attending a wide variety of classes and workshops, reading papers and writing essays, but also by sharing your personal experience with your fellow students for, from more than 60 different countries. But eBay extends beyond uh, mere uh, numbers. Over the years, it has transformed into a dynamic community involving multiple voices. Currently, our community uh, thrives with approximately 80 dedicated scholars and administrative staff members and a broader uh, teaching staff in, in, uh, including active professionals and faculty members from our partner universities. Within this vibrant community, we foster a culture of rich and intricate conversations, nurturing shared discourses and mutual understanding on the premises, on the pressing issues which the, within the realm of international affairs. Through the year, we have continuously organized uh, international conferences, workshops, uh, lectures, uh, seminars, attracting esteemed visiting professors and scholars from every corner of the world. Uh, and I do hope that you were able to share uh, different aspects of this experience. Actually, the persistence of the war in Europe, a growing world polarization, or the multiple challenges of global governance and development are contested topics. In pursuing the master's programs, you had the occasion to contrast them from different sensibilities and values with people from around the world. And we at EVA uh, care that you took full advantage of this opportunity to transform it in an extraordinary experience. Thus, I expect you now perceive current world, current world challenges and the complexities and nuances of international politics and globalization in a way that will seriously support and fuel your professional careers in the years to come. 
I, I take this opportunity to express my sincere hope that your time spent at master's students at eBay has been nothing short of remarkable. I am quite confident that this experience has provided you with a unique and enriching perspective on the world and international affairs. By actively engaging in a diverse uh, array of classes, immersing yourself in intensive reading and writing, and sharing invaluable experiences with fellow students, you have gained profound insights into a myriad of perspectives. Furthermore, I trust uh, that our comprehensive range of elective courses has empowered you to tailor your studies, enabling you to craft a distinctive profile that align, aligns harmoniously with your personal and career aspirations. As a young and ambitious institution, we at eBay are committed to a continuous pursuit of improvement. We ensure that our graduates are equipped with the strongest possible skills and competencies uh, to excel in their future careers. In line with this vision, we are also dedicated to expanding our networks, creating more extensive internship opportunities, and bolstering eBay reputation on a global scale. In this sense, we take great pride in having recently achieved the significant milestone of successfully completing our uh, institutional accreditation, an accomplishment that attests our commitment to excellence and expects to elevate our quality standards in the years uh, to come. Finally, I must emphasize the crucial role you play in the ongoing journey of eBay. We genuinely need your continued support to transform eBay into one of the Europe's foremost graduate schools for international studies. Through our nearly two decades of existence, we have surpassed initial expectations and achieved remarkable progress. However, uh, there remains an array of ambitious goals that we strive to attain. For this reason, it's imperative for eBay to maintain robust professional, professional, personal, intellectual connections with you in the near future. We are fully committed to supporting you in building networks, fostering connections, and remaining engaged with our institution. In turn, we thoroughly invite you to actively contribute to making eBay an enduring example of academic excellence, an institution to which you can proudly return, and a testimony to your collective achievements. Let me now introduce our invited speaker, Dean Arancha Gonzalez. Arancha Gonzalez is currently the Dean of the Paris School of International Affairs at Sciences Po. And prior to joining uh, the International Affairs School, she served as Spain's Minister of Foreign Affairs, European Union, and Cooperation. And she previously was Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations and Executive Director of the International Trade Center. Between 2005 and 2013, she served as a chief of staff to the Director General of the World Trade Organization, Mr. Pascal Lana. We are very honored that she has accepted our invitation to give the graduation lecture this year, 2000, 2023, at eBay. Dean Gonzalez, this is a great honor to have you with us today. class of 2023. It's hot, but I don't want to refer to the heat. I want to talk about the warmth, uh, which is what you experience on your last day in eBay. And, you know, we at this table know that we are standing between you and your graduation party. So we know that's a tough. But I cannot resist to leave you with a few thoughts before you go out there. Up until now, you've been in the world of theory. But the moment you cross that door, you will be architects of a new global order. That's what you've been training for. So let me give you a few parting advice from someone that was not that long ago sitting at that chair. We are living in very turbulent times. Lots of changes. These changes are not new. They've been building for many years now. But recently, they've accelerated. The system, the order, we like to call it. Some people don't really think it's very orderly. Let's face it, it's rather disorderly. But let's say the system we've been living in since the end of the Second World War, and more importantly, since 1989, when some people talked about the end of history, 
wasn't a very wise expression, now we know, the system is changing. It used to be rather unipolar. Now it's much more complex. It's unipolar for security and defense in that there is only one country that's the number one in the world. But it's much more pluripolar as regards the economy with the US, European Union and China representing almost equal parts of global growth, of global GDP, of international trade. And it's very multipolar from a political point of view. Meaning there are many countries out there that today have the will and the capacity to shape the new international order. It's India, it's Indonesia, it's Brazil, it's Mexico, it's Turkey, it's Saudi Arabia, and the list goes on. So much more complex to build this order and to keep the order. Today we are also much more divided. There is a big geopolitical divide. It pits the East and the West. There is China and the US. Big geopolitical rivalry. It's been accentuated since Russia decided to invade Ukraine. China, we know, we call it a partner. We call it a competitor. We call it a rival. I have to say that if I look at the front pages of the newspaper, this triptych is moving slowly more towards the rivalry category. And that's a problem, because we also need spaces of cooperation. Suffice it to say that China represents today 32% of CO2 emissions. The fate of climate change is there for today in the hands of China. We better find a way to cooperate with China. But the world is not just east-west. There is also a growing divide between the north and the south. Old colonial grievances, recognition, or rather regurgitation of the invasion of Iraq, more recent episodes like COVID, and the impact of the war in Ukraine, all of this is coming back to fracture the relationships between the North and the South. There is no such thing as a global South. The South is very diverse. The South is made of lots of countries that have agency and other countries that simply don't want to be put in a position to have to choose. Many are suffering just last week in Paris, the president of France hosted a major summit to discuss international financing. Over 50 countries today are in debt stress, meaning they have no income to spend on education or health care. They have enough just to serve the debts they've incurred. This is not sustainable. This is why I think it was important that the summit took place to look at how we address this issue that is a north-south issue. The divide is also between democracies and autocracies. Democracies feeling a bit on the defensive. Weaknesses at home. And autocracies feeling emboldened are not very constrained in terms of building a new order. So we've got a complex world, more divided, with an economy that is also changing. Globalization is changing. It's not that we are deglobalizing. We are not. It's that the basis on which globalization has been built, which is openness as a default option, markets over states, economics over security, and above all, one system, the World Trade Organization, the house where everybody could converge. Those principles are today in question. With some arguing that we have to choose between trade and security, as if we could. In addition to this, as if this was not enough, we have a rather weakened international system. 
I've worked in the international system for 25 years of my life. In the United Nations, in the World Trade Organization, and I can tell you that I've never seen a situation in which the return of force as the guiding principle of international affairs was so present. Where we had so many international agreements, arrangements that were becoming obsolete because we were not doing enough to improve them, to make them up to the new times. And where we have entire areas where we've got no international governance. You know about ChatGPT, right? I'm sure you've all been using it. ChatGPT is great on so many ways, but it's terrible in so many other ways. Who's going to take care of the disruptions in the education system? Who's going to take care of changing the way we learn and the way we teach? We need a little bit of governance. And this is applicable to artificial intelligence, it's also applicable to the space or to exploring the deep seas. So this is the liquid world in which we now live. Now, up, up to now, I guess, so far so good, you've not discovered anything that you hadn't, uh, I guess, studied in this year at eBay. The most interesting thing is what can we do, what can you do to craft a new international order? It's going to require a lot of patience, so remember this, don't feel discouraged, it takes long, don't expect rapid results in whichever area of international affairs you will be, because it will take time. We need to change the way in which we do governance. We used to do this with states and states only seated around the table. This is no longer possible. And we need to make sure that international affairs are part of domestic debates. So when you go back home, whatever home is for you, it doesn't matter. Make sure that international affairs are part of the debates that animate domestic spaces. The biggest risk we face is one of fragmentation, that the world fragments in rules, that the world fragments in governance systems, that the world fragments in different competing orders. Mostly because the biggest challenges we have to face require a sense of togetherness. They require instruments of coordination and spaces of cooperation. In the meantime, rather than trying to converge or helping countries converge, I think the current order in Perfecta Cities will have to help us manage the risks of divergence, make sure that differences between countries do not translate into conflict. Whether these conflicts are on trade, on climate, whether they are on technology or on security, let's make sure that as we imagine a new order in the interim period, we help prevent the risks that will come from divergence. I would also ask you to please be advocates for multilateral cooperation. And to do that, because this is what will help us manage the risk of divergence. We need to be ready to rebuild the multilateral system, but in the meantime, we need to defend it so that we have something to rebuild from. Multilateralism in the future is going to require actors other than states. 
you will be working in some of these spaces, whether it's in academia, whether it's on civic spaces, in NGOs, or in the business sector. All of these actors are the new actors we need to bring to the multilateral spaces. If you're going to be working on the economy, who's going to be working on the economic side here? Nobody? Well, for those of you who will, maybe you are shy, remember that the economy works on the basis of macro, macro considerations. But remember also that there is a micro dimension to the economy that we need to work, to care, to act, to address inequalities. So as graduates of international affairs, I invite you to become builders of this new international order. You are going to be told that you are naive. So please respond that what you are is realistic that the only way to build an effective order is to do this through international cooperation. You will be told that you will fail. Well, guess what? It's fine to fail. It's through failing that you will learn. And that's fine. Because at the end of the day, if you learn, you become stronger. You will be told that it's all about national sovereignty. Well, sharing sovereignty is the best way to be more sovereign. So, dear class of 2023, you are now architects of the new order. Go out there. We count on you. Good luck. Be brave, bold, and dare to fail. Thank you very much for your invitation today. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Gonzalez, uh, for uh, your graduate <coughs> lecture. Uh, I think it was very uh, stimulating for, for us, and in particular for students uh, that have to start a professional career in uh, the coming years, the coming month. Uh, let's now uh, to the uh, uh, professors Irina Siornei and Yanis Karyakarnis, who will address a few words to the students. I'm not their professor anymore, but I want to teach them something, which is that this works best this way. <laughs> this, is, this is empirical knowledge. <laughs> Irina, go ahead. Okay. Good morning, honorable guests, colleagues, friends and families, and most importantly, the wonderful class of 2023. I would like to give a particularly big thanks to the families of our students for two reasons. First, of course, for all their support during the entire academic year. And second, for being here today, because otherwise it would feel like being in the classroom again with so many students, only at double the temperature. So thank you for being here. This has been an amazing year in which we learned so much about each other's experiences and cultures, world politics, transnational injustices, and global hope. You reached an important milestone in your career, and I'm positive that you will become brilliant and dedicated professionals of international relations, development, and security. professionals of international security, we mean, you know, in, a, in an office in Brussels sort of stuff, right? Not, not, nothing to do with Eastern Europe. So, so 
Uh, yeah. Car careful to those of you who are in the Masters in International Security. It's <laughs> tr troubling days. We want to congratulate all of you for the immense effort, resilience, and creativity that you showed during the academic year. I know that it was not always easy, and I know that there were moments when you felt confused or lost, especially when you had to find your research question or when working hard to finish an assignment. We have new data. <laughs> um, finishing assignments. Our German and Finnish students are always late. Uh, please try to copy Greeks, Romanians. Uh, you'll... I was actually referring to all of our students, okay. Yanis. However, I have always been impressed by your capacity to solve problems in an original way, challenge yourself, and become an inspiration to those around you. I remember one of my last classes when we spoke about social mobility and migration and where some of you reflected about your personal trajectory of becoming a global citizen. After that class, I realized that not just some, but all of you embraced the world as global citizens. As we say, the cosmopolitan nomads that feel at ease in so many countries and cultures, who know distant places and who have friends around the globe. This is the spirit of our days, and you are the best ambassadors for that. Yes, the, the spirit of our days at eBay, perhaps. We had the Greek elections last night, and about 15% of um, my fellow citizens would probably not share that. But um, um, I guess this means that you, as global citizens, have many challenges uh, to, to address, so good luck with it. True. And what I have also learned throughout the years and during my interactions with you is that globalism and cosmopolitanism are empty words without a genuine commitment to solidarity and equality. We encounter new and interesting things every day. We fight to be the best and to reach our potential. This constant thrive for competition is definitely one of our characteristics as, as humans. But what makes us humane is our attention and empathy with those who need us. You blend these qualities, being good at what you do and doing it with a purpose. This will help you have an impact on the lives of many for the better. Some of you will do this by acting directly at the international level. Others will do it through local actions. All of you will do it, immersed in your routines, desires, and circumstances, different for each. I think that the one lesson that I learned since I was your age was not to frustrate myself about the big things I cannot do, but rather to do as much as I can in the circumstances that I find myself in, to give the best here and now, and big things will follow. And I had to think about something deeper and more interesting than this. So imagine. Uh, I couldn't. So the best I could do is to rephrase what Irina just said. Let, let me try. When the going gets tough, do not become frustrated because of all the big things you cannot do. Think about the macro, micro, right? Both are interesting. My macro dimension, micro dimension. Try doing as much as you can given the circumstances in which you find yourselves. Give the best of yourselves right then, right there. And trust in all the knowledge you have acquired here at eBay, in the analytical skills you have mastered, and above all in the work ethic you have developed. So again, Congratulations for having mastered your trade. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Irina and Yanis, uh, and to sharing your, your views about eBay and uh, wishing wish, your wishes for uh, the students' careers. Let's now to the uh, now the war on students' representative. Is uh, 
Paloma Servín, Tia Williams y Matthew Marlaulán. today to speak to you guys. We would love to share some parting words and some wisdom before we part ways. So before we get started, I'll introduce myself and we'll go through a little introduction and then we'll get started. So again, my name is Taya Williams and I'm a proud representative of the International Relations Program. <laughs> my name is Paloma Servim and I am also from International Relations. Hello. I'm Matthew McLaughlin Morello, and I'm also a proud representative of International Relations Masters. Represent it, represent it. There's a lot, there's a lot going on here. I'll just put this up. Okay, you guys ready? Buckle up. <laughs> so we'll start by taking a deep breath. I want everyone to do it with me. So we'll go. You guys ready? We're gonna do a big yoga deep breath. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. Release. We've been holding in a lot, but release. Release self-doubt and stress. We particularly know how that feels, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> release negative self-talk and worries. But most importantly, release fear. You've made it. And yeah, we have our thesis, but you know, we don't think about that. You know, we'll, we'll be present right now, okay? We did it. Relief feels good, huh? <laughs> As we transition into this new phase of our life, let's reflect back on this experience. Reflect back on yourself prior to Barcelona. Who were you? What did you want in life? Why Barcelona? <laughs> And has these answers changed since then? You know, humanity is meant to evolve. You are meant to evolve. Centuries ago, who would have thought we've had the innovations that we have today? The innovations you've contributed to. You are innovative. Think about your evolution here. The people you've met, the experiences you've had, and the knowledge insight and perspectives you've gained. Could you have fathomed being where you are today? <laughs> I don't know if I could. <laughs> you stepped off that plane last year and took a leap into the unknown, adapting to ever-changing circumstances. You are courageous. Through housing, Tia, Padron, Spanish bureaucracy, the list goes on and on. We know how that felt. <laughs> but you persevered. Each and every day, you rose. You kept going despite your silent battles that no one knew about but you. Show yourself grace. Grace, guys, show yourself grace. This journey wasn't easy and others may not understand. But also, it's not your job to explain it. This is your story. So write it and tell it exactly how you want. It doesn't have to flow or make sense or be put together. You know how this world is, it's perfection, all of perfection. But it does need to be cherished by you. Paint it if you want to. Continue to evolve and become the person you want to become, not what others want. Stand in your truth and make them uncomfortable. <laughs> but also, be willing to learn from other stories. Every story matters. You know, I've had the privilege to connect with many of you guys. Shout out to my squad out there. <laughs> and I've witnessed so much beauty, potential, and power in this room to challenge antiquated views, 
disrupt systems, and to be the necessary voice this world needs to combat pressing issues. But I will continue to challenge you. Ask questions. Step out of your comfort zone and learn the unfamiliar. To listen more than speak and check your own biases. But most importantly, be a selfless leader. A leader that holds their peers accountable and stands against injustice. May you continue to write the story that you're proud of. This marathon will continue. So keep running your race. Thank you. Buenos dias a todos. Good morning. <laughs> I want to start by saying that I feel so honored to be giving this speech today. And so thank you for, for this opportunity. Eh, especialmente gracias a mis amigos latinos que me impulsaron a hacerlo. <laughs> okay, for some people, doing a master's degree was a given. An important step that could be taken for granted that will guide them towards their goals and dreams. For others, like me, doing a master's degree in the old continent was a dream in itself. And today, that dream is coming to its conclusion. But like every dream that ends, it is a reality check. Today, we stop looking down at our books and start looking ahead to the future. What we see, what we actually see is a reality that challenges us. Receiving this degree cannot be a mere step towards our goals or a dream that comes to its conclusion, not in the reality we are seeing today. This master's degree cannot be a simple check on the list. Nuestros esfuerzos de formación, nuestras horas de estudio e investigación, al final se convierten en herramientas. Mis papás me enseñaron que la educación, especialmente en países como el mío, es un privilegio. Y ese privilegio implica una responsabilidad. La responsabilidad de utilizar estas herramientas para mejorar realidades. There were 10 months of classes, professors, and classmates from all over the world, and many hours of reading and studying. Many. <laughs> However, I really believe that the most important lesson we learned were from debating among, uh, amongst ourselves and listening to each other. Listening to those who speak from what they live and feel makes us more empathic. It reminds us that before being students or masters, we're human. Throughout the school year, we have developed the capacity for active listening and empathy, qualities that the world seems to have lost when we look at Twitter or read the news. However, they were a constant in our classrooms, in the cafeteria, in the library, but especially in Ovella Negra. <laughs> Mami es otra librería, otra biblioteca. <laughs> in Barcelona, what a city. We will always be grateful to the city of Barcelona for having shown us what we are capable of and for giving us the best metaphor of what we are. With its iconic Sagrada Familia, just like us, always under construction, always improving, always. Apart from this degree, we are going to take in our suitcase much more than we expected. Our friends, who this year became La Familia. This master degree is not just a goal or a fulfilled dream. It is a beginning. A beginning that can be returning home, starting an internship, doing a thesis, a new job. And like any beginning, in order for it to bear fruit, you just have to do it. Um, San Francisco de Asís has a very motivating quote for beginnings. I share it with you. Start by doing what is necessary, then what is possible, and soon you'll be doing the impossible. Whatever we're going to do now, let's simply do it. No matter how small it might be, with the confidence, the conviction, and the certainty 
that we will be the generation to achieve what today seems impossible. Thank you very much. Gracias. Good morning, EB class of 2023. Congratulations. I am deeply thankful to you for the honor of choosing me as a speaker today. Just before starting, I need to thank my brother Alvaro. Ever since I told you I wanted to study this master's, you have given me your unconditional support, helping me to get through this year in every way imaginable, and I will be forever grateful to you. As I put myself to this task, of choosing what to address today, I could not stop thinking of using this opportunity to speak about our generation's struggle, the climate crisis. The climate crisis threatens to reorder the fabric of our society, changing the world as we have known it growing up. We should not forget that thanks to our parent generation's efforts, we stand in this room today to graduate from our master, but our parents were born into a very different reality from the one we will encounter. As time passes, they will find it increasingly challenging to guide us through our future decision making as we venture into uncharted waters. We will be pioneers, the first to navigate this new reality. These decisions will test us and expose us. Do we give into an uncontrolled and slow motion collapse? Or do we work to create new systems adapted to the, to the realities of climate change? With great hope, I tell you, you can decide to stand up and face the challenge from wherever you are, in whichever capacity we can. An American journalist once asked when Aventura Durruti an anarchist leader in the Spanish Civil War who is buried here in Barcelona, in Montjuic, what he would do if they managed to win and govern a war-torn country. He said, we know we will inherit nothing more than ruins, but we do not fear the ruins because we bring a new world in our hearts, a world that is growing in this instant. With each hat, very different journeys here at eBay, with different motivations and diverse interests. Although we will soon scatter across different countries and areas of work, probably as we are diverse in this room here today, be that as it may, I need to use this position you have granted me to send one message for all of us. The privilege of becoming graduates in international affairs comes with the responsibility no matter where you land, to help build prosperous and fair societies, where we prioritize ecosystems that thrive over how rich we can become as individuals. It is our generation's greatest deed to make Earth a place worth living for those that will come after us. Give me the chance to wrap up now by humbly asking you to fear not the ruins because we bring a new world in our hearts. Never forget that change requires optimism. We will be faced with the greatest challenge to date. We each interpret this responsibility very differently, and that is a good thing. Defend your ideals, debate and learn. Let your ideas evolve and flourish, but always carry hope within you. This is the only sustainable way forward. Salute and thank you. Thank you very much uh, to all the speakers for uh, your inspiring words. And now we, 
we will begin the second part of this ceremony. So uh, thank you, Dr. Gonzalez. It has been a, a big, a, a fantastic uh, lecture. And uh, now uh, Dr. Nasi Serra will come. Um, so now, uh, the diplomas uh, will be uh, awarded to graduates uh, of the Masters in International Relations. And here we have uh, Dr. Uh, Andrea Bianculli. <laughs> Well, thank you, you know thank you. That, uh, Very nice to see you all here today. Okay. Just a quick reminder before we start. So please come up in groups of four. You will get your degree, wait until the photo is taken, and then you go back to the same seats, and the next four people will come up. Right? Great. So let's start. Sheridatu Abu Manaf, Amira Al Mahdoub, Albar Alberton Plasquez. Do, do come in, please. Nurbek Alisherov. Rafael Alves, Matthew Appleton, Falastin Aguadala, Maya Batavia. <laughs> Arnaider Fons Dottier. Ella Blacksell, Katie Bloom, Chloe Boogers. <laughs> Sira Cusine Gonzalez, Ana Smetit, Francesc Delgado Mas, Suhil Dwick. Maria Isabel Elobeit Escorcia, Ibrahim Al Samawi, Erika Everett, Yaya Fan. Harry Fouts, Ryan Gardebelt, Lue Gagnati, Paula Andrea Gutierrez Yepes. Yoli Hajikiriaku, Michael Harty, James Han Heidenreich, Matilde Henriksen. Yeah. 
explanation. Adriana Hernandez Barreto, Kim Shun Ho, Mikey Hoffman, Ana Cristina Kierner. Cristina Kivist, Paula León Mora, Marcela Lima, Hannah Lauda. Alba Marie Sánchez, Ramón Martínez Bellot, Matthew McLachan Merelo, Matías Miranda Baira. Inés Morais, Anguila Muenga, Julia Owen, Cody Payunen. Ivan Giuseppe Palagino Villamil, Julie Marie Pierce, Daniela Perez Inestrosa, Olga Rafals Aviac, Albiac. Peter Rorvik, Benedicte Roiland Vege, Alba Saiz Contreras, Luis Santa Marta Espuña. Leslie Santin, Vitor Santos de Sousa, Linia Schleyer, Gernot Schmidt. Alisa Schreiner, Jan Peter Stiller, Paloma Servin, John Sierra Ludueña.
Ada Peterson Esmets Ruth Hagen, Brian Smith, Mariela Soto Mora, Nicolás Troutwine. Alexander Silas, Matais Van Um, Leonardo Varga El Millé, Paula Andrea Vázquez Rojas. Maximilian Wachter, Lorraine Wilk, Thea Williams, Francisco Winter. Elena Sacedateleva, Seyu Zhang, you went, I, sorry, you went, so, sorry. <laughs> Congratulations to all, very well done. Thank you and congratulations all of you. Uh, and now uh, the diplomas will be awarded to the graduates of the Masters in International Security. Right, okay. well, congratulations. Thank you, Margarita Petrova. Thank you. Congratulations everyone from security. So we are starting now with Jamila Alintogan. <laughs> Ivan Bayar. <laughs> Hannah Bradford. <laughs> David Berdinger. Marina Caballero, Mar Maria Isabel Carion, Blanca Celi, Ariana Cole, Pablo Ferrer, Pablo Ferrer, Maria Gallego, Valentin Gaia, Ellen Manwaring, Daniela Matkiasova, Morgan, Morgan Mifflin, 
Abby Mills, Bernard Payot, Payot, Next one, Carmen Ponce, Manuel Rato, Jose Luis Rodal, Elia Schwartz, Alfonso Suarez Saro. Thackeray, Yuke Torreya, Bart Van de Steck, and, and Gonzalo Vidal. Sophie Whittingham, <laughs> Arthur Willoughby, <laughs> Luke Witteven, Sandra Wong, and Martha Woods. Well, congratulations, and now is the turn of the graduates of the Masters in International Development. And uh, Julia Apaidin <laughs> will conduct us. First of all, a huge congratulations, everyone. So I'm going to be starting calling out the names. Here come the MID graduates. <laughs> Maria Paula Acuna Pardo, Julia Arango. Michal Ashra, Sara Azi. Julia Bolotowski. Svenja Busken, Yi Chen Chiu, Nadia Issa Dahir. Anna Karelina Darboven, Khaled Darwaza, Alexandra Diata Sancho, Max Elson.
Valentina Maria Fontana, Maria Gurdani, Engaborg Seivik Heltner, Hikaru Kentama. Darlene Cops Isasi, Roser Lafon Colominas, Bianca Angela Lebron, Constantina Locari. Janis Luna, Rebecca McDowell, Mariana Molina, Ainoa Morales Chinea. Maria Antonia Moreno, Alba Ochoa, Edmund Pendleton, Agustin Pestano. Ruhi Shah, Kuiva Hulaban, Amit Singh, Feline Wald. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you very much. Congratula congratulations, all of you. And now, the last group uh, for the Erasmus Mundus uh, Masters in Public Policy. And uh, thank you, Dr. Robert Kisak, for the awarding of the graduates. Hey, welcome everyone. So, for the graduates of the two-year Erasmus Mundus program, the Masters of Public Policy, the first four people to come up will be Monica Alegre, <laughs> Cristina Siobotari Rayo, Ramani Tavrari, and Juliana de Morais Pinherro. Agustin Gonzalez Gaviola, Tara Grimm, Zenia Ivanovic, Sara Javed.
Angelo Camus. Sofia Lamus Quintero. Mureta Lofit. And one more, sorry. Back row, uh, Kivakov. Angie Montenegro Alvarado, Sidat Nere, Bruno Palomi Bini Castal, and Maria Trisha Quidro. Leon Ruket, Yurian Stehenha, and Volta Van de Klipper. And finally, we have a graduate from the Research Masters of International Studies 21-23. So it gives me great pleasure to award the diploma to Dominic Dezio or Nick Dezio. Okay, we are beginning the last part of this uh, ceremony. Uh, let me uh, to introduce you Narcis Serra. Uh, he has been the president of uh, eBay since its foundation in uh, 2004, um, encouraging its efforts to turn Barcelona into a reference city for international studies. Many of us as citizens remember him as a minister in the Catalan government in the 70s of the last century. And uh, he was also the mayor of Barcelona and a Spanish minister at defense and some years later uh, as deputy prime minister. Um, now uh, he, um, he, he will close uh, all this act, all this event, and I give the floor to Mr. Narciserra, the president of the eBay. He will close the graduation ceremony. Thank you very much for your presentation. Well, thank you very much to all of you, students and families, to come to this graduation ceremony. We have been listening to the vice rectors, a very, very good lesson by Arancha González Lara, uh, the students, the faculty has been given as a short speech. So I think that I, to close the academic year and the graduation ceremony, I limit myself to wish all of you to, th to congratulate, first of all, congratulate for the grade to, to the students and to wish to, to you all very, very good luck in your professional careers. Thank you very much.
thank you. Congratulations to all uh, the graduates. I also wish you much uh, success in your professional and personal life. Thank you very much, uh, all the attendees, to this ceremony, and uh, the session is over. Thank you. Thank you.